What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing a game, and if you like game reviews, don't forget to subscribe so you can see more. The game we're reviewing in this video is Ease 9 Monshum Knox. Developed by Nihon Falcom and localized, published by NIS America. So shout out to NIS America for giving me a copy and this opportunity to review this game. The copy that I reviewed is the PS4 and I played it on the PS5. The Nintendo Switch and PC version will be released in the summertime of 2021. So if you're planning to get it for those systems, then you can totally watch this review and find out how the game is. Ease 9 Monstrum Knox is the 10th title of the Ease series. There was Origins and there's 1 through 9. If you're not familiar with the E series, it's about an adventurer named Adol Kristen. He explores all over the world and he just encounters these adventures. He encounters gods, higher beings, evil beings, ancient civilizations. He uncovers mysteries and he solves them and he somehow saves the world. And the reason why I'm explaining this is because each tile is its own story. You don't need to play the previous ones. You don't have to know the lore of all the games. You can play each one on its own. For example, I first played Ease 8 of the series. And then I played the other titles. And now we're talking about Ease 9, Monstrum Knox. Let's start with the story. Adol the Red, his nickname, arrives in Balduklia, a territory of the Roman Empire, with his good buddy Dogi. And at the security checkpoint, Adol gets thrown into jail. Adol, what did you do? You just got there. Apparently, Adol is a suspect in the disappearance of a Roman fleet because his previous adventures reported were deemed questionable, not helping his case. Now, Balduk is known as the prison city because it has the largest prison in the Roman Empire. Proving his innocence is getting harder to prove and Adol finds a way to escape. During his escape, Adol runs into a mysterious woman, Aprilis, who shoots him with a magic bullet, turning him into a monstrum, bequeathing him the name Crimson King. With his new powers, Adol escapes the prison using his gift, Crimson Line, an ability to warp to marked locations, and fights against monsters along the way. After Adol escapes, he finds out he is now a wanted fugitive and cursed. He cannot leave Balduke. There are magical barriers preventing him from leaving. Adol needs to find out how to prove his innocence and the answers seem to be at the prison because something shady is happening there. To investigate throughout Belduke smoothly, Adol wears a disguise and dyes his hair black to hide his trademark red hair. While investigating, Adol gets pulled in and grimrolled Knox, a realm where the line between humans and monsters called Lumeries become obscured. There, Adol meets other monstrums learns they are all supernaturally gifted individuals forced to exterminate Lumiris in the Grimworld Knox, and like him, cursed from leaving Balduke. Not only are monstrums forced to fight Lumiris in Grimworld Knox, but if they don't conquer the waves, there will be consequences in the human realm. Now back in the human realm, there are barriers all over Balduke, hindering Adol's investigation, especially especially from advancing areas related to the prison. Monshams can disable the barriers after conditions are met, which is by entering the Miasma Vortex and conquering a Grimwell Nox wave. So this is what Adol needs to do. He needs to investigate the prison and get rid of the barriers blocking the prison. In order to get rid of the barriers, he needs to conquer Grimwell Nox. And to conquer Grimwell Nox, he needs to fight Lumeris as a monstrum. All to get to the prison to find answers to prove his innocence and break the curse. 
characters. Who do we encounter? We got Adol, an adventurer exploring throughout the Eurasian continent, encountering monsters, gods, ancient cities, and defeating a higher being, saving the world. We got Dogi, a former thief known as the Wall Crusher, who has been Adol's partner for many adventures. A Perlis, a mysterious woman who shoots Adol with a magic bullet, turning him into a monstrum. Monstrums! Supernaturally gifted individuals of Balduk exterminating monsters in the Grimworld Knox. Adol's fellow cursed party members, which are White Cat, Hawk, Doll, Raging Bull, and Renegade. The Dandelion, a bar filled with companions who support Adol's monstrum activities. Through quests and side story events, Adol gains more allies for a smithy, prepping for waves, material exchange for crafting, and more. Hieroglyphs Knights, a religious order of knights maintaining peace and spreading the word of the Hieroglyph Church defending Balduke alongside the Roman garrison. The Roman garrison, an occupying force of Romans defending Balduke. Maxim, the black market dealer. And more NPCs as you explore throughout Balduke. Gameplay! Everything in Ease 9 Monstrum Nunks has a purpose, making gameplay not feel like a player is grinding. To progress in the story, Adol needs to get into the prison, and a lot of the entrances to the prison are blocked by barriers. Players need to dispel the barriers, but to do that, players need to go into the Miasma Vortex. Miasma Vortexes manifest after filling up the Nox gauge by completing quests and defeating Lemuries. Throughout Bulduk, there are Black Pillars. Players approach the Black Pillars to initiate a battle with the Lemuries. This aspect of the game makes it not feel like players are grinding because players can control when to fight enemies, and the battles are short. Battles can end quickly when players utilize advanced tactics and damage types. Advanced techniques are Flash Move and Flash Guard. Flash Move is evading an enemy, granting temporary invincibility and increased mobility. Flash Guard is blocking an enemy, filling up the boost gauge, and briefly making all attacks critical hits. There are three damage types. Slash is effective against soft enemies. Strike is effective against armored enemies. And Pierce is effective against aerial enemies. When players lock on enemies, it allows players to see an enemy's weakness. Adol can be in a party up to three people, and each member has a damage type. Players can switch the leader and utilize the damage type best against an enemy. As the Monstrums level up, they acquire skills, dealing more damage to the Lemuries. Regular attacks reward players to fill up the SP gauge, and skills are then available to use with those SP. The skills are helpful to cut down enemies' HP, ending the battles faster. A new addition to the E series is Boost. In other titles, there was skills, then extra skill. And now in E's 9 Monstrum Nox, there's Boost that literally enhances the performance of the Monstrum. Boost can be activated when the boost gauge is half full and more. Sharing the boost gauge is extra skill, a powerful attack damaging surrounding enemies. Extra skill is great to use against waves in Grimmel Nox because there are hordes of Lumeries attacking and cutting down enemies' numbers helps tremendously. At half full and more, players can activate boost and the effect lasts until the gauge depletes and activating extra skill uses up the whole gauge. Players shouldn't recklessly use extra skill whenever they can. Maybe activate extra skill when the gauge is almost empty. So the Miasma Vortex appears and the Monstrums can enter to conquer Grimwell Nox. Conquering Grimwell Nox is like Horde Survival Mode. Players protect the base from increasingly difficult waves of enemies until the end. The Monstrums protect an obelisk called a Sphine from approaching enemies. Waves of Lemuries will spawn from black pillars scattered across the field. The waves can get chaotic, so identifying enemies' weaknesses, using Crimson Line in battle, boost, and extra skill will help a lot in Grimo Nox. At the Dandelion, players talk to Dogi to prep for waves like enhancing the Sphine, creating enhancing decoys, and creating Lux Cannons that stun enemies. After conquering Grimo Nox, players are awarded items depending on the results. These items can be used for wave prep, enhancing equipment, and more. 
So Grimo Knox has been conquered, the barrier is dispelled, and Adel can now advance further to investigate the prison. There are clues and leads all over Balduke, and the deeper players get into the story, the more complicated the situation seems to be. The prison is an intricate fortress with layers of labyrinths that locals don't even know about. And the Roman Empire running the prison seems to be up to a lot of suspicious stuff that may be connected to the manifestation of the Lemaries and Grimmel Knox. A lot of shady stuff is happening. Fortunately, Adol and the Monstrums use their gifts to help them uncover the truth. These gifts are superhuman abilities unique to each Monstrum. Crimson Line, an ability to quickly warp to locations marked and enemies locked on. Heaven's Run, an ability to run up walls. Hunter's Descent, an ability to glide through the air. Third Eye, an ability to see objects and enemies through walls. Shadow Dive, an ability to plunge into the darkness and move about underground, making it easy to sneak up on enemies or access tightly secured areas. And Valkyrie Hammer, an ability to destroy makeshift walls. The gifts make exploring Belgic enjoyable and opens access to a variety of areas. In each location explored, players can locate and activate fast travel points which are relief tiles and landmarks. These fast travel points make it so easy to progress in the story and multiple quests at the same time. There will be times players will need to travel all over the map and go back and forth multiple times. These fast travel points make it feel less tedious. Players can also fast travel into dungeons they previously cleared in the prison. Audio! There is a lot of voice acting. Ease 9 has dialogue for the protagonist, the monstrums, and NPCs. One of my NPCs is Shante, the bar manager of the Dandelion, because he has so much flair and sassiness in his lines. It's fabulous. Ogi, of course I didn't forget about you. Those biceps are quite simply ravishing. Also, each monstrum has their own distinct personality and issues. The voice actors did a really good job portraying them through the dialogue. The music for the game has a soundtrack similar to previous titles and doesn't have anything popping out like Easy Sunshine Coastline. There is a unique theme to Ease 9 compared to the other titles, which is an eerie, mystical, gothic-like sound, reminding me of games Labyrinth of Refrain and Tales of Berseria. Graphics! Colors really pop in this game. Maybe it's because there are dark colored scenes creating contrast for anything colorful. Maybe. There are more details in clothes like showing the texture of the stitching and the threads from the cloth. There is a better balance of light, dark, shading, highlighting, especially in characters' hair. Attacks are more vivid. In previous titles, attacks portrayed the motion and direction with a white colored effect. In these 9, attacks are colored to that character. Red for the Crimson King, blue for Hawk, pink for Raging Bull, and etc. Extra skills in Ease 8 filled up the whole screen, almost to the point of being blinding because it's so bright from its fantastical effects. And in Ease 9, extra skills start out close to the character, then zooms out, showing the powerful attack affecting the area, which makes sense since it's an attack damaging surrounding enemies. As someone who played multiple titles of the E series, I can see the improvement the developers made for each new title. And Ease 9 so far has the best graphics. In conclusion, Ease 9 Monstrum Knox is an amazing 2021 game. The story gets more intricate as players progress into the game. There are also stories from party members and NPCs making the Ease world feel more real. Like this could have been a place in our world where similar events happened, except for the supernatural part. Everything done for gameplay is not wasted from exploring, collecting, crafting, and fighting. Multiple fast travel points make it easier to explore and creates motivation for players to explore searching for these fast travel points. Quests are optional but also related to the game's story, making it feel it's not out of the way, while also help filling up the Nox gauge. Fighting Lumeris doesn't feel like players are grinding because it helps fill up the Nox gauge, gives experience, and drops are used as materials for enhancing equipment and such. Grimo Nox, which are horde mode like waves, also have a purpose because by successfully protecting the Sphine, barriers are dispelled, allowing players to advance into areas progressing the story. And the whole time, players are uncovering the mystery of Balduke, the prison city. The shadiness happening in the prison? 
connections to Lemaries and Grimo Knox and the Monstrum Curse. And that's my game review of Ease 9 Monstrum Knox for the PlayStation 4 and 5. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a like. And if you want to see more game reviews, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next video. What did you think about Ease 9 Monstrum Knox? Do you have any questions, opinions? Let me know in the comments below. I also have a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. You can totally pop in and, you know, just ask questions. We got people who do that. You can also visit me when I'm streaming on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Sometimes we get people who have watched these videos and pop into the streams to ask questions and such. You know, get that real-time one-on-one. It's totally fine. Everybody's welcoming. Come on by. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime and manga. If you like that kind of stuff, there is a link to the podcast in the description below. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lee Hua and this was the Superfina channel reviewing the game Ease 9 Momstrom Knox for the PlayStation 4 and 5. Hope you guys liked this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.